with us today from home, and uh, it's an Easter Sunday, and I'm so thankful that our Savior lives, amen? Uh, he lives, and I'm so glad of that, and he's still turning graves into gardens, and he can make such a change and a difference in your life today, and uh, we just encourage you this morning just to, to worship with us, uh, begin to think about Easter and uh, the resurrection, and uh, what this day represents, and what it symbolizes, and I thought about the resurrection, how it's a uh, sign of, of how our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he overcame death, he overcame sin, and he overcame hell. And uh, not only that, but it's also a representation of new life and a new beginning, a fresh start, and that's exactly what Jesus Christ is in the business of doing. And I just want to say this morning, if you're watching and viewing uh, today, that if you're lost and uh, you need a fresh start, you need a new life, a new beginning, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, he can save your soul today and make such a change and difference and give you that newness of life. I want to read just a verse of scripture this morning uh, before we go to the Lord in prayer. And, and we've got a, uh, uh, a good service uh, and prayer and plan for, for today. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of songs coming up by uh, Pam Faust and, and then Mark and, and Autumn's going to be singing. So we do ask that you would pray for us and uh, pray for this service this morning. Uh, a verse of scripture today that God has given us comes from the book of Revelation, uh, chapter number one. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, said this in the first chapter. Starting with the 17th verse and verse 18 said this, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, but behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. We serve a risen Savior today, and we serve a victorious Savior. And uh, we do ask that you would uh, pray. Uh, and join us this morning in prayer. Uh, we do have a couple of requests today that we're going to make mention of. 
I want you to continue to pray. Remember Evelyn Paul Bush. Remember uh, her daughter as she is continuing to recover uh, from uh, the virus. She lives there in New York, so remember her. And then also remember Evelyn's granddaughters. Three of her granddaughters have tested positive uh, for COVID-19. And also uh, her daughter's husband has as well. So please remember them this morning as you pray. Continue to remember the, the co-worker of Rachel Jackson uh, that also had tested positive. Let's continue to be much in prayer uh, for our country. Uh, as we pray, remember our president, our vice president, remember our medical leaders, remember all the ones that are on uh, the front line, our, our medical workers, healthcare workers, remember their health, remember their mental and physical health this morning when we pray. Uh, let's continue to also remember uh, all the ones that uh, across this world uh, that have lost loved ones due to the virus and that have loved ones in sick. Let's be much in prayer for them today. Uh, but let's pray for this service and uh, just pray that, that God's Holy Spirit would fill your heart this morning and that we could just worship Him today in spirit and in truth. I'm glad that we serve a risen Savior and I'm glad that we can worship God today in spirit and truth. And uh, wherever you're at this morning, uh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty to praise and worship Him. So let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, before we go any further in the service this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, uh, for, Lord, what this day represents, and God, for what it means to us. We thank you, Father, for uh, the death on the cross. We thank you, Father, for the resurrection. Uh, and today we celebrate that, Lord, and we recognize and we honor Lord, your resurrection. And Father, we thank you that through the resurrection, Lord Jesus, you overcame death and you overcame hell and you overcame our sin, Father, that you took upon you. Your word teaches us and tells us, Father, that one that knew no sin, yet he became sin for us, that we may become the righteous of God. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Father, that, uh, Lord, that, that when you arose, that, that God, that you were, was the once one that was dead, that you're alive forevermore this, mo this morning. And, God, you have the keys of death and hell, and we are so thankful for that, that, God, you are victorious, and you are a conquering Savior. And, Father, that knowing today that, Father, because you live and because you are an overcomer and victorious and have conquered all those things, Father, that we as well are more than conquerors, Father, through you. And, Father, we have the victory this morning, Father, through the resurrection. And we pray today, Father, for us that have been saved by your grace, we ask and pray that, God, you would help us this morning to walk in the newness of life. We pray that, God, you would help us to walk in your resurrection and live in your resurrection, Lord, and, and knowing that today that, God, you've given us a fresh start, a new beginning, Lord. You give us new life today, and we thank you for it. And we pray this morning that, Father, that, Lord, you would just so fill our hearts today, Father, Lord, at home or wherever we may be that is watching and listening, that, Father, you would help us, Lord, just to worship you this morning and speak and truth. Help us, Lord, to sing along with the songs, and Father, help us just to worship and praise you, Father, as they're sung, and Lord, we pray that, God, you'd help us to rejoice, Father, in the preaching, God, of your word today as well. God, we thank you, Lord, for all you've done. We pray for those that are sick. Pray for those that are recovering from the virus. We pray that, God, you would continue to touch them, Lord, and give them strength and healing, Father, that they need today. We pray for the ones that's lost loved ones, Lord, due to this sickness. We pray that you would comfort them, Lord, in a way that only you can. God, we just praise you. We thank you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Why do I feel discouraged? And why do the shadows come? And why does my heart feel broken and lost? Heaven. 
With us. 
songs this morning and uh, sure do appreciate Pam singing and uh, his eyes on the sparrow. I'm glad that we serve a God this morning that uh, he knows our every move and he watches us and takes care of us and also the song Consider the Lilies, you know, God, he, he provides and he makes a way and uh, the Bible teaches us and tells us if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness that all these things shall be added unto us. And I'm so thankful that we serve a God this morning uh, that does take care. He does provide for his children today. And I'm so thankful uh, for the resurrection. There's no grave that's going to hold uh, my body down. I'm so thankful that uh, to be saved this morning, to be a child of God, and to know him in the free pardon of sin. I do ask for your prayers this morning that we'll try our best to follow the Lord, preach what God has given us. We're going to begin reading this morning uh, from the uh, book of Mark. St. Mark chapter number 16 is where we're going to begin reading. And uh, we do ask for your prayers today uh, that we'll try our best just to follow the Lord and uh, preach what God has given us. But uh, Mark chapter 16, and we do encourage you today, uh, if you have your Bibles at home, uh, to follow right along with us. Mark chapter 16, and we're going to begin with the very first verse of Scripture there, starting in the 16th chapter of the book of St. Mark. And the Bible says this, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, 
they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side and clothed in a long white garment. And they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And that's all we want to read this morning for right now. Uh, we want to uh, look a little bit this morning, of course, at the uh, resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But uh, we want to look at this lady uh, by the name of Mary, Mary Magdalene. And uh, we find here that the scripture teaches us, and uh, it tells us here in the book of Mark, as we begin to read and study, uh, that this lady Mary, uh, Magdalene, and also Mary, the mother of James, uh, they were uh, on their way down to the tomb, to the grave. And uh, the Bible said there that they had bought sweet spices uh, to go and that they might come and anoint him. They had purchased uh, these spices with their own money. Uh, they had bought them. And uh, we find here they were going to anoint uh, the very body of Christ, the very body, the very body of Jesus, our Lord. Uh, as we want to look here, that uh, first off, of who began to write this gospel? Uh, the writer of this gospel, uh, we know by the name of, of Mark. Uh, but when you begin to study just a little bit more about this, we find that his name was John Mark. And uh, Mark was uh, the Roman uh, surname that he was given, uh, but John was his Hebrew name. And uh, when you begin to study a little bit about this, we find that Mark was an apostle, uh, but he did not hold the uh, uh, official position among the 12 uh, disciples that were chosen. Uh, we find that uh, Mark had a very godly mother when you begin to study the scripture and you begin to study a little bit of uh, history about Mark. Uh, John Mark, you'll find that his mother was very godly. Uh, we find that he, her name was named Mary. And uh, she was a widow that lived in Jerusalem. And uh, we know that from the book of Acts, chapter number 12, that uh, uh, John that John Mark, his mother, uh, her house became a favorite meeting place uh, for the saints of God. And we find in Acts chapter 12, we read of where Peter uh, had been imprisoned. And we know that also James had been beheaded uh, by King Herod. And we find that the saints had begun to gather together there at John Mark's uh, mother's house, and they began to pray for Peter while he was there in prison. And according to the scripture of Acts chapter 12, we find in verse 12 that, that Peter showed up at the door, that he came to the very house of John Mark's mother Mary. And uh, we know that the Lord answered that prayer uh, that the saints had begun to pray. We find that uh, not only that, but uh, we find that Barnabas uh, was the uncle of John Mark. And you probably know that from reading in the book of Acts that uh, Paul and Barnabas, they set out on the great missionary journey uh, to go and to tell the world about Jesus Christ, about their Savior, about their Lord. We find that Barnabas was his uncle. Uh, not only that, but was probably his mentor and counselor uh, through this. But we find that uh, through study that uh, his conversion uh, for salvation uh, was owed to Peter. And uh, we find that Peter called him in the scripture, he called him Marcus, my son. And we find that he spent about 12 years uh, with Peter, the apostle, the disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mark was a great uh, historian. He was a great writer uh, of his time, and he helped others. Uh, he was referred to as the helper of others. And he served the Lord, and he served others, and he served the people of God. And we find that uh, Mark as well, he had his faults. 
uh, at one point in time that we know that Mark, he, he took his hand off the plow, he turned back, he, he, he left, and uh, we don't know what happened to Mark for some while, but we know that Mark overcome those faults, and he can overcome those failures and continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost and dying world. And, and we all here this morning know that, man, there's a time that comes in our life sometimes we overcome. Uh, we, we've come in a time in our life where maybe we've turned back a little bit or we've maybe grown cold or, or indifferent to the Lord. But, man, thank the Lord this morning that through and by the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness and the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we can overcome that and continue to share the gospel with a lost and dying world. So we find here that the writer uh, that was John Mark here, no wonder uh, he had a first-hand experience. He knew exactly uh, who the Lord appeared to first, being with Peter for 12 years and, and just uh, talking with Peter, but also maybe uh, he he was around that time that he maybe saw and heard or knew uh, that the Lord had appeared to Mary Magdalene at the very beginning. Uh, so we want to look this morning, first off, we want to look at Mary. Mary Magdalene, the Bible teaches us and tells us she's first recorded in the book of St. Luke, chapter number 8. And the Bible says in Luke, chapter 8, verse number 1, it said, It came to pass after that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And a certain woman, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. This woman, the Bible said in verse number three, at the last part it said, and uh, that they went, these women, they went and they ministered unto the Lord of their substance. This lady, uh, Mary Magdalene, she got her name Magdalene from the place that she uh, was born out of, come out of, was Magdala. And uh, when you begin to study about Magdala, it was a very prosperous city at the time of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, so we find here that this woman, uh, Mary Magdala, the Bible said that she had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. And it said that Mary was called Magdalene out of whom went seven devils this woman, when you begin to look at her throughout God's word, you're going to find that this lady, she followed the Lord. She ministered to the Lord with all her substance. She was the one that, that took care of Jesus and she was about his travels and she probably no doubt went wherever the Lord went and was there while he was preaching and teaching in different villages and different cities. And my friend, we find that throughout the scripture it teaches that Mary Magdalene was one of the women that that she went all the way to the cross of Calvary with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. She was one of the ladies that was standing there at the very uh, at the very foot of the cross as Jesus Christ hung and died and bled that day. Uh, we know that she was there with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and we know from the book of John that John, the beloved disciple, was there as well. And we find in the reading this morning that this lady Mary that she went all the way to the tomb. She went all the way to the grave, to the sepulcher uh, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're going to pick back up in the book of Mark this morning where the Bible said that and very early in the morning that the first day of the week they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Mary and Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, they wanted to get down there early. They wanted to be down there before the Bible said at the rising of the sun. And it said that when they got down there in verse 3, they said they began to ask themselves this question. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? Uh, they began to ask themselves among them, they said, Who's going to roll the stone away for us? We've got to get in there. We've got to anoint. We've got to prepare the very body of our Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We've got to anoint him with these spices that we we have purchased and that we've bought with our own money. Um, what? How is this stone going to get rolled away? How are we going to get to the very body of Jesus Christ? They begin to ask them this question. And the Bible says in verse number 4, it said, And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. My friend, when they got down there and they got to see and they got to look at the very tomb, the very grave, they saw 
saw that this stone had already been rolled away. Man, what they discussed and what was their obstacle, what stood in their path and in their way from getting to the very body of our Savior and of our Lord was this stone that was very great. And they even asked and they talked and they wondered how this stone was going to be moved. Who was going to roll the stone away for them? But listen, God had a plan and God went before them and God prepared and God made a way and he rolled the stone away for them that it was so great that they couldn't move on their own that it was probably too heavy and too strong and too great but yet God rolled it away for these women and he made a way for them to be able to minister and do the work for the Lord Jesus that they were going down to the tomb to do and the Lord reminded me this morning man maybe you may be sitting there this morning and man maybe there's just a great sin that's in your heart and that's in your life and just as these women they begin to question they begin to wonder who's going to roll the stone away who's going to roll this sin away that's in my heart that's in my life because this sin is far too great this sin is too great for you to roll away on your own you can't overcome this sin by yourself it has to be rolled away by the very hand of God and God this morning is the only one that can roll the sin away in your life. He's the only way, my friend, that can roll the obstacle. He can roll the challenge. He can roll whatever it is that's in your path this morning. He can move it and get it out of your way and make a way for you uh, to live in the newness of life and to have a fresh start in the Lord today. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ is that one. God prepared. He made a way. He rolled the stone away for these ladies that was so great for them that they could not move. God moved it out of the way. God's still preparing a way. He's still making a way just as he did for the children of Israel. Man, we read there Wednesday night, God gave us the message about the Passover. And, and listen, the, the Passover, not only did God deliver his children from Egyptian bondage, my friend, out of the mighty hand of the Egyptians, but God delivered them with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. But yet he brought them out of Egypt and he brought them out in the, into the wilderness there. And the Bible said that when they got to the Red Sea, that they looked behind and they saw Pharaoh and his army pursuing. They were coming after him and there was nowhere for them to turn. They couldn't go to the left or to the right. All they could do was either go back to Egypt and surrender and become slaves once again to Pharaoh. But yet or they could go forward and they begin to complain. They begin to cry to Moses and say, Moses, why have you brought us out into this wilderness? Were there not enough graves for us to die or to be buried in Egypt and God said that Moses began to pray and he lifted up his eyes to the Lord and God told him he said Moses listen he said tell the people to stand still and to see the salvation of the Lord Amen. and the Bible said that God told Moses he said take the staff which is in your hand and he said and lift it up to the heaven and he said and wave it back and forth and the Bible said that as soon as Moses was obedient to the very word and the commandment of God it said that those those waters begin to part. And my friend, it looked like there was no way for the children of Israel, but yet God made a way for them, amen, in their life. And he parted those ways. He parted that sea, and he gave them dry ground to walk across. God still is making a way for his people today. And he'll make a way for you this morning in your life if you'll trust in him. The Bible said, Verse number 5 in Mark said, And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting clothed on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were afraid, frightened, frightened. And he saith unto them, Be not afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. crucified. He said, He is risen. Man, are those not great words this morning? When, when those ladies got to the very grave, when they got to the very tomb, and the stone had been rolled away, and then what did they see? They saw this young man, the Bible says, sitting on the right side. And he said he was clothed in a long white garment, and they were 
afraid, but yet he spoke these very words. He said, be not afraid. He said, but ye seek Jesus of Nazareth. Listen, I'm glad to know this morning that we can have a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety in our life. But listen, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And he told him, he said, be not afraid. He said, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth. He said, which was crucified. He made the statement, listen, he was crucified. He was dead. He was buried. But he said something else. He is risen. Amen? He is risen. He is not here. Jesus was no longer in the grave. He was no longer in the tomb, but he was alive. He was gone. He was arisen. He was no longer there. And the Bible said, behold the place where they laid him. And when they looked into the tomb and they saw that the place where Jesus lay, that he was no longer laying there. My friend, what joy must have overcome them, but also what great fear must have struck their hearts. Because the Bible said the man told him he said but go your way tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee there shall he see him as he said unto you you know why he said Peter as well he said but go your way he said and tell the disciples and Peter Mark wrote this gospel and he was a follower he was a follower of Christ but he spent 12 years with Peter. He had a relationship with Peter, a friendship, a closeness with Peter. And no doubt Mark had an insight. And he mentioned Peter among all the other disciples. He mentioned his name. Why, you wonder? Well, I think because Peter needed a word of encouragement. Peter needed something that he could cling to. Peter needed some strength. He needed some confidence instilled into him because Peter, Peter, the last time he saw the Lord, he looked upon the Lord. He had just denied his Savior for the third time. But yet, listen, God was going to give Peter a second chance. God was going to give Peter a new beginning, a fresh start, and a new life because God gave Peter another opportunity uh, to continue to go and to preach and to share the gospel to a lost and dying world. And we know that from reading throughout the book of Acts that God used Peter in a mighty way. God used Peter to be the one that stood at the day of Pentecost and under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit of God, Peter preached and there was 3,000 souls that was saved that come to know Jesus as their Savior and as their Lord. Maybe this morning you're sitting here listening and watching. Maybe, man, you deny the Lord. Maybe you denied the Lord at some point in time in your life. You denied Him with the way you live. You denied Him with some of the things you've done in your life. Some of the sins that you've committed. Some of the sins that you've done. Listen, my friend, I've got hope for you today. I've got encouragement for you today. I've got confidence for you today. Why? Because we serve a risen Lord. And we serve a risen Savior today. That we serve a Savior that's in the business of giving you a second chance, a third chance, a fourth fourth chance, a fifth chance, and on and on and on. We serve a merciful, loving, gracious, forgiving God today. And listen, just as he done for Peter, he can do for you. This is what this day represents. It represents a new beginning. It represents a new life. It represents a fresh start for you and for me. And if you're sitting here this morning, and listen, you may not be where you need to be with God in your walk and in your relationship with him. Listen, all that takes is repentance. All it takes is trusting in Jesus and asking him to forgive you of your sin. And listen, committing your heart and committing your life to serving Jesus Christ. Amen. And listen, Jesus can give you that fresh start today. He can give you that new beginning, that new life that you and I so desperately need. That's what he did for Peter. He went on to say there in verse number 8, and it said, they went out quickly and they fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Man, were, they were amazed. Not only that, but they trembled. I'm sure that, that, that man just being able to, to see this young man, no doubt he was probably an angel or a, a messenger that was sent from God himself. 
But yet when they heard the very words that he has risen, that he is no longer there, behold the place where he lay. Man, the Bible said they were amazed. And they said that neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. But the verse number 9 says, Now when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, about whom he cast out seven devils. You think about this lady. Man, she followed the Lord all the way to the cross. She followed him not only to the cross, but she followed him throughout all her life. And you think about this lady that uh, that that she was tormented. The Bible said of seven devils. Uh, she had an evil, unclean spirit, infirmity. The Bible said about this lady. But yet, when she met the Lord, when she met Jesus, man, he made such a change and a difference in her life. And because Jesus gave this woman her life back and gave her her a life worth living. She committed her heart and she committed the rest of her life unto following Jesus and serving and ministering for him. Listen, my friend, Jesus has done the same for you and he's done the same for me. You think about the life that Jesus has given you and given me. You think about the change and the difference that Lord Jesus has made in your life. We ought to commit our heart today. We ought to commit our life into serving the Lord and following Jesus for the greatness and the good things that he has done for you and I. Amen. Just as Mary did. I want to read this morning John's account of, of, uh, the, the, of uh, chapter 20 of Mary Magdalene when she went down to the grave. In John chapter 20 of the Gospel of John, starting there with the very first verse, the Bible says this, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. She runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, which was John, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Mary thought that they had come and took the very body of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She thought maybe the Roman soldiers or, or Pilate or some of the chief priests or the religious leaders of that day maybe had come and, and or the grave robbers had come and just took and stole away the very body of their Lord, the very body of their Savior. So what did she do? She ran and she wanted to tell Peter and she told John, she told the other disciples and the Bible said that here's what happened. So Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and they came first to the sepulcher and he was stooping down and looking in saw the linen cloths lying yet went he not in. And then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. And as yet they knew not the scripture, for as they yet knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own homes. So we find here that Peter and John, they ran the other disciples. They got down there. They saw that the tomb was empty. They saw that the grave clothes were lying there. They were folded. They were ready uh, that they were lying there where he had been laying. Uh, but the Bible said they did not see the Lord. But it said that they went in also and this they saw and believed. Amen? But it said there in verse 11, as the other disciples went home and they went back to their way, it said, but Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seen two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And when they saw her, they said, woman, why weepest thou? And she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Did you notice what Mary said? They have taken away my Lord. 
It was something, he was something personal to Mary. He was something, my friend, that meant everything to this woman. This was her Lord. Her Savior, her Master, the one that made such a change and a difference in her life, the one that had cast out those demons that was in her life, that gave her life again. It was her Lord. And she said, I don't know where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Verse 15 says, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Why are you crying, Mary? Why are you weeping? Why are you crying? And he asked her, he said, Whom seek thou? Who are you looking for? Who are you seeking, Mary? Why are you crying? Why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Who are you seeking? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. But yet Jesus said in verse 16, Jesus saith unto her, Mary. He called her by name. He said her name, and she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabbani, which is to say master. She realized who it was. She knew that it was her master. She knew that it was her savior. She knew that it was the one that had made such a change and a difference in her life. She realized that he was alive, that he was no longer dead, but that he was living, that he rose from the grave, that he rose from the tomb on the third and glorious day just as he said that he would. And Jesus told her, he said, listen Mary, he said, touch me not. He said, for I am not yet ascended to my father. He said, but go to my brethren. Listen, Mary had a message. Mary is responsible for carrying out the message of our risen Savior and our risen Lord. Jesus tasked her with a very important work and a very important message. And listen, my friend, this lady that Jesus appeared to first, that he had made such a difference in her life that my friend she was run down she was beat down no matter what it was she was possessed of or what she was facing in her life Jesus took a difference and made it in her life and he told her he said listen go to my brethren and say unto them I ascend unto my father he was telling her listen Mary he said I'm going back to the father I'm going to sit down at the right hand of God the father and I'm going to make intercession for you and the brethren and for the whole world and the Bible said that there was one mediator between man and God and that is the man Jesus Christ I'm glad to know this morning that we got a great high priest uh, that will go before the very throne of God for you and I and offer his blood as a sacrifice as propitiation for our sin and the sin of the world he said I sinned unto my father and to your father and to my God and your God. And my friend, the Bible said in verse 18, Mary Magdalene, she came and she told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. Man, oh man. And he said that he had spoken these things unto her. Mary was the first one. She began to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Go back to the book of Mark this morning. We're going to close with this. You know what? Jesus, after he appeared to Mary, he appeared to the others as well. And you know, as Jesus was sitting there, the Bible said he sat with them at the table at meat during dinner, during supper time. And he said that he began to upbraid them with their unbelief and their hardness of heart. Jesus began to get on them a little bit. He began to scold them a little bit. He began to say, listen, he said, you've been dull. You've had a hard heart. Listen, uh, why did you not believe that I had a rose? Why did you not believe that I was alive 
on the third and glorious day, and he began to encourage them, though, as well. He said, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. But you know what Jesus told his disciples after he sat there at the table and he began to talk to them and encourage them. He gave them these words in verse 15. He said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yes, amen. Church, we still got a job and a mission and a calling to do as the bride of Christ, as the church of the living God. Just as Jesus gave the message to Mary that he is alive, he is risen, he's not here. Behold the body, behold the place where he laid. The body's no longer there. Just as he went to the 12 or the 11 and he told them, he said, listen, he said, here's the message here. I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive and well. He said, but go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Church, that is our mission. That is our job. And that is our purpose on this earth. It's for us to tell the world about a Savior that's risen, that's alive, and he's alive forevermore. Amen? And he said, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Thank the Lord for that this morning. Amen. If you're watching this morning, I just want to encourage you today that just as Mary Magdalene had to overcome sin and possession of, of, of devils and unclean spirits and infirmities and, and things that she had going in, on her, in, in her life, uh, the Lord Jesus was able to save her. The Lord Jesus was able to make such a change and a difference in her life of something that had such a hold, a stronghold in her heart and in her life. Jesus was able to make a change in her life. Jesus can do the same for you today. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, whatever it is you're battling with, whatever may have such a strong hold in your life today, whatever sin that you face, Jesus is able to save you and to make a change in your life today. He is able to give you that newness of life. He is able to give you that fresh start. He is able to give you, listen, that resurrection power of our Savior. And just as Peter, man, Peter, he was a follower of Christ. He was right there. He was the one that ever seen. He was the one that said, Lord, I'll even go with you all the way to the end. Lord, I'll die with you. Lord, it won't be me. I won't deny you. No, never. But yet he did for three times. But yet the Lord gave Peter a second chance and another opportunity. Jesus can give you another opportunity today. He can give you that fresh start. He can give you that new opportunity to continue to go on and share the gospel and tell the world about him. And I just encourage you this morning, uh, I'm glad we serve a risen Savior. Amen. And I'm glad we serve a risen God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, Father, for what the day as we said once again, represents. We thank you for the scripture this morning. God, we thank you, Father, for John Mark and in his life. And Father, Lord, how John Mark started strong, but yet there was a time in his life, Father, that he fell by the wayside. And Lord, as he took his hand off the plow and looked back, he, he went back, Lord. And he, he left Paul and left Barnabas. And, and Father, he, he began to go. But Father, I'm so thankful that your grace and your mercy and your love, Lord, it, it come into his life. And Father, you gave Mark a second chance and another opportunity. And Father, you began to take him from that time forward that he was able to overcome his faults. He was able to overcome and continue to share the gospel and tell the world about you, Lord, and help others along the way. Father, Lord, just as Mary Magdalene, this lady, Father, for the just the change and the difference that, God, you made in her life. Father, for just your power that, Lord, filled her, Lord, and, and Father, forgave her and cleansed her and released her and delivered her. Father, for what had such a strong hold on her. God, I know you're able to do for someone today. God, you're able to release that. You're able, Father, to deliver them, Father, from the sin that has such a strong hold on them this morning. And just as Mary did, she devoted her life to serving you. God, I pray today that, God, you would help us as Christians devote our life to serving and living for you. 
God, I pray as Mary served you and she followed you, Lord, she went all the way to the cross and she went all the way to the tomb. And Father, Lord, she was the first one that you appeared to. And Father, you gave her the message of hope. You gave her the gospel message. And that was that, Lord, you're alive. That you were risen. That you overcome death. You overcame sin. And you overcame hell. And you conquered those. And God, we thank you for that today. We love you. We praise you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us this morning and spending your Easter Sunday with us. We want to encourage you to continue to be much in prayer uh, for our church. Remember the prayer requests that we've made mention. And we also want to continue to encourage you to share uh, the sermons and the services that, that we have uh, with your family, with your friends and coworkers and neighbors. Continue to do our part to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to this world. Uh, we encourage you to come back and be with us again on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We'll be live again right here on Facebook. Thank you. Hope everybody has a good day.